Um, this is the paper, uh, winter 2017, and class paper 43, component 43. First question, the figure below shows the photomicrograph of a cross section of the trachea. The open space at the center of the trachea is labeled A in the figure one way. Air travels into and out of the trachea show this open space. State a gas that is at a higher concentration in expire air than in inspire. You can write, because it has only one word, you can write carbon dioxide, or if you write water vapor, also it is correct because it's a, in the form of a gas. So either water vapor or it can be carbon dioxide. The next part of this question, describe and explain the functions of the structures or substances labeled B to E in the figure. Use the letters in the figure in your answer. I move into the figure again. Ilia is B. Yeah, let's sweep the mucus out, okay. C is mucus, mucus. And there are also goblet cells because the goblet cells, they make mucus. You can write any of them. And they don't have cilia, but they are, they are just responsible to produce mucus. And the job of them is they, to secrete mucus. If it is goblet cells, they secrete mucus. And the mucus, the trap particles or the pathogens inside it to prevent infection if they ask you what is the job of it. So you can write goblet cells or mucus. You can say it is the goblet cells that produces mucus. What is the job of the mucus is to trap the pathogens to avoid or prevent infections. Uh, what is the E? Is a ring shape, so you should see. Is a C cartilage? Yes. Is it cartilage? So E is a cartilage. And what is the job of it? It keeps the airway open or the trachea. Yes. And what else do we have here? D also is a goblet cell that produces mucus, the same as C. Whatever you have written for C, D, or C, you can write for D too. Well. So there are some of the events during inspiration when you take in uh, into your lung, put the events showing in the figure into the correct sequence to have been already done for you. So what we have to put in the first box, the rib cage moves upwards and outwards. Is you. After you, you put P because the pressure in the thorax decreases. Then is T, air enters the nose. Then is air travels through the larynx. The voice box, S. Then is air travels down the tra tra trachea because it's after the larynx, so it's Q then. The next one is should be air enters the bronchi, R. And then D, air enters the alveoli. So this is the answer. So just why alveoli have thin walls? 
for gas exchange diffusion, or movement of the CO2 and O2 is short distance, as you said, for the diffusion or gas exchange. If you didn't write this one, you can substitute with another answer, which is fast gas exchange or diffusion. So at least you have to mention two of them. So one for gas exchange, two is a short distance with a, yeah. Sickle cell anemia is a disease that reduces the delivery of oxygen to tissue. Explain why. Hemoglobin is abnormal or rigid, so it's become a sticky. And abnormal hemoglobin carries less oxygen than the normal one. And the red blood cells are sickle shaped. They are not buying kind caves anymore. And they stick together. They may cause a clot in the blood vessels. And also, we will have fewer red blood cells. You only pick three of these answers. You do not need to write all five. We just put different options for you. The, the most important thing is that because of that mutation or whatever has happened, that abnormality, the change, the shape of the red blood cell changes. If it changes, it no longer can carry that amount of the oxygen compared to the normal. A shaped hemoglobin or a red blood cell, and also become sticky and causes um, clot in the blood vessels. There are the answers I think you can write. So, students investigated the effect of the exercise on their heart rates. They measured their heart rates before exercise, immediately after running 1 km, and one minute after running 1 km. Before doing the investigation, they wrote a hypothesis. Write a hypothesis for this investigation. So, yeah. <laughs> so I give you a different option based on the answers, which is given and I explain to you why they have come up with this. So you can write any of them. Exercise will increase heart rate from resting rate. Or you can write after exercise, heart rate will remain high or start decreasing. Or uh, if you can write there is no effect of exercise on the heart rate, if it is a non hypothesis In a non hypothesis we have to negate everything. You say it doesn't happen. It has no effect. So if you write just the uh, alternative hypothesis become the positive one, it means that, yes, something happens. They have effect on each other, the ones that you already said. So what happens, it means exercise will increase the heart rate. Okay, so it is one of the, for example, hypothesis. If you want to write the null hypothesis, then you have to say uh, there is no effect of the exercise on the heart rate. They have no relationship between them, no correlation. That's it. So you can pick any of them. Just what is the question? What do you think will happen at the end? Based on your knowledge, you just write it as your own hypothesis. Later on in the, in the conclusion, you may wish to, you may prove it or may just disapprove. The student measured their pulse as an indicator of heart rate. Describe how the students could measure the pulse. So you can put your fingers yeah, on your wrist, on your neck, or on any arteries, and then number of the beats should be counted over a period of the time. How many beats in a given time? For example, one minute, how many beats? And always you can use a heart rate monitor, or you can, yeah. Um, in another investigation, a doctor tested some of her patients to determine the effect of exercise on coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease is caused by a blockage in the coronary artery. Describe the effect on the heart uh, of a blockage in the coronary artery. The question is this, I mean, just don't waste your time to read all the question. Just first read the question, and then if you didn't understand it, you needed more information, I'm just reading everything for you. Well, you shouldn't do that in the exam because it's just wasting your time. We don't have too much time to answer each question. There are uh, lots of uh, question here, 18 marks, and you need have a very short time to answer. So describe the effect on the heart of a blockage in the coronary artery. What does happen if there is a, coronary, uh, is a blockage in the coronary artery? Put the possible answers. Again, I'm telling you, you should not write all these things. You just select two of them. Lack of blood supply or oxygen. 
or glucose or doesn't reach the tissues or the cell of the heart on that specific part. And uh, if there is less oxygen, so there will be less or uh, the cells go under anaerobic respiration. And or also the heart cells will die because they won't be able to supply their uh, enough uh, the energy that they need and the heart muscle cannot contract anymore. But you only just, if it is as you said, if it doesn't reach there, the oxygen cannot be delivered or the nutrients cannot be delivered and the cell is stopped dying. It's a heart attack. Yes, also that's correct. The doctor divided her coronary heart disease patients randomly into two equal groups. Each group was given different instructions. I don't want to, so I just want you to first look at the diagram before reading everything. Average heart rate recovery, beats per minute, okay, and the time and month and high fitness, medium fitness, low fitness, okay. I just want to first read the question. Describe and explain the effect of exercise on the average heart rate this recovery of the coronary heart disease patient in group A and B. So it just look at this. I don't read anymore the question. I do not need it. I just need to uh, interpret this diagram and compare group A to B. How do I do that? I use data here. So, Okay, I want to write down the possible answers given here and then we discuss together. So at, this is a month and at zero month, three months later, six months later. Group A and group B. Average heart rate recovery with per minute is given. Group A patients were given a daily exercise plan and patients B told make their own plan. So for the B, they are doing their own plan, but the other ones are being given the exercises and the planning. Okay. So what I what we see that in the month zero at the beginning, both of the groups they show they have no difference. There is no difference between group and B, A and B in the month zero. Okay. After that, the heart rate recovery. There is an improvement gradually. In the group A from month zero to six. But in the group B, in this from zero to three, there is an increase and after that it decreases. So this is the another description. At the three months, there is a little difference between groups and the group B is a bit higher compared to this one, is the recovery in the group B at the month three is higher. But in the month six, group A is higher in the recovery compared to the group B. It's another thing that we can write. We can compare any kind of the data. I mean, if you can use this kind of, how many per, bits per minute or something like that, you can use this data. For example, these ones maybe uh is 18 bits per minute for both of them you can use the data yeah or maybe you can just make some deduction here i'll get a percentage how, how much is the difference between these two for example this one maybe is 22 this one is 24 is two for example bits per minute is a difference between these two and this one stands higher you can use data to write you know, any, do any calculation to make a comparison to minus the doc and just which one is, how much is bigger, how much less. So it will help you to get more mark because it has six months, so you have to write a lot. 
And so now explanation. Well, how do you explain it? Because I have written a lot about it. I just write about description. Now about explain how to explain these results. We can say that the regular exercise improves the fitness uh, if there are a plan for it during the time after time. And exercise can strengthen the heart muscles. So, and also, And when you give plan with, with, the, with, or with the planning, usually in the long term, it has a positive effect on the recovery. Without the plan, uh, in the short term, maybe it has an effect, huh? This is another explanation. Is it necessary to repeat it again or not? Just make a comparison between which one, which one, both of them at the beginning are the same, then the B is a slightly higher in the month three, then in the month six, after six months, the A is higher. What do I conclude from this? I conclude that maybe using a planning for this, uh, for the patient is much more better and efficient in the long term, but um, without the plan, maybe the, the patients are trying to have to go more rigorous exercises or whatever based on their own planning and the, whatever. So it doesn't help them much. And that's it. Exercise may reduce the risk of the coronary heart disease. State one other possible way of reducing the risk of developing coronary heart disease. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, the... Oh yeah, stop smoking also is a, you will get a full mark because only one is necessary, but you can also write, reduce the salt or cholesterol. You can stop smoking, you can reduce stress. Uh, if there is a medication required, you can use medicine, proper medicine. Uh, don't drink alcohol. Yeah, these are the possible answers. Well, only pick one of them and write it. Apple scab is a disease that infects apple trees. Figure below shows apples from uninfected and infected apple trees. There is a gene that determines whether or not apple trees are resistant to apple scab disease. There are two alias for the gene. If it is resistant, it's R capital. If not, it is recessive. Complete this sentence. Genes and alleles are made up of DNA. DNA. A farmer wanted to do a test cross to identify the genotype and disease resistant apples trees. They would tell him whether his trees were either homozygous dominant or heterozygous, determine the phenotypes of the offspring. If no parent apple, okay, heterozygous. Complete the genetic diagram.
is already says that it has all, all information is given. One of these, this one is unknown, but it says it is determine the phenotype of it if it is heterozygous. Heterozygous, it means that this one, it means the alleles are not the same. They are different. One dominant, one uh, recessive. So I already know, but because it is disease resistant, so it should be dominant in a since RI. The other one, it is not disease resistant, should be definitely homozygous uh, recessive because this is the only way that the R can express itself. Otherwise, if there is a one capital R in it, one dominant, the dominant will show itself. So that is RR. Now, again, I construct this uh, table again to find out the offsprings. And you see, this is the ratio of the genotypes and the phenotypes. The genotypes uh, offspring is RR heterozygous and also RR homozygous, a small one. And also, what is the offspring phenotype? Both of them are, yeah, one of them is disease resistant and the other one non disease resistant. The farmer wanted to breed disease-resistant apple trees. He decided not to use heterozygous disease-resistant apple trees in the selective breeding program. Explain why. Because the heterozygous, um, um, they are carrying a allele, uh, which is uh, the non-resistant allele. And then the some offspring, they will be not resistant then if they use the um, heterozygous. And of course, using heterozygous results uh, in profit loss. They don't want it. So they want a more resistant one. So that's why they use hom homozygous. Okay. The farmer wanted to be sure that only the selected disease resistant apple trees would reproduce and suggest what the farmer could do to ensure that only the selected apple trees were pollinated. How do you, how do you, you're just labeling it, isn't it? Or you can use any of these answers, yeah, any of them. But it has one mark to just use one. You can paint it if it is paint pollen onto a selected trees or isolated plants, cover flowers of unselected trees, identify not disease resistant trees, and then remove them, remove those trees from that area. The next question, describe how artificial selection differ from the natural selection. Differences between artificial selection and natural selection. In the artificial selection, the man actually is manipulating the species. So is everything is man involved and is a human choice rather than environmental pressure. And there would be less, of course, diverse still variation. It's just those features that are des desirable for us uh, in our favor, we choose them. And also the species won't be fit anymore. they will be less fit for the uh, place. So less fitness of the species. Because the human is involved here, we choose. Uh, natural selection is just randomly, they are made together, the species, they cross together. I mean, they are producing offsprings with the different varieties, more variation and diversity in the genes, in the features, in the, the traits. But when we are involved, when we are interfering into this mating of them, we choose those ones that are in fa our favor and good for us and we are, um, prefer some of the traits and the feature of those animals more for our own benefits, then we actually make them, we cross them together, and we will have offsprings with the less variety, only, only those traits or features they have that they want to have, but they will be less fit to the environment, and uh, they will be weaker, of course. Uh, 
the Canadian government were concerned about our fishing at the Grand Banks in the Atlantic Ocean. As a result, uh, commercial fish stocks were monitored from 2002 until 2013. The population data for four species of fish are shown in the figure below. Use of information to say, state the most abandoned fish species in 2002. M, yes. Suggest the fish species that have the most carefully controlled fishing quotas between 2002 and 2013. Give a reason for your choice. It should be L because it's more stable data. Calculate the percentage increase in the species N between 2002 and 2003. Show your working. How much changes do you see? Yeah, the percentage, you mentioned the percentage. It means that if you started from for 500, from 500, how much change did we have? The amount of change is 2000 minus 500, isn't it? This much is the change, uh, the answer. It will become 1,500, isn't it? Okay, so we have this much change. Now, if out of 100, if you start, how much would be the change? Because we want to get it from 100 and to express it in a percentage, isn't it? So because, so again, I do the calculation, becomes 1,500 divided by, sorry, times 100 divided by, divided by 500, yes? What is the answer here? So the answer is 300% change. The change is 300%. Overfishing is a possible reason for the decrease of the population of a species M between 2002 and 2003. State two other reasons that could have cause these decrease. There is a lack of the food, is it me, um, maybe migration, maybe uh, there is introduction of the pollution or any kind of the environmental changes or introduction of the new species. So any of them that you write here is correct. Introduction of the new species, uh, migration, pollution, introduction of the pollution into the water, or it can be any kind of environmental changes. Part C, overfishing can be reduced by having large holes in fishing nets, we call it as a mesh. Showing uh, this section, the figure shows section of two fishing nets, the drawing of both at the same scale. Uh, so just how controlling the size of the holes in fishing nets helps to reduce overfishing. The smaller fishes can actually pass through it if the holes are bigger or the mesh size is bigger. So if the fish is small or is still immature, it has a chance to escape. Another reason that you can say is that um, maybe it uh, just catches those uh, species that we target. I mean, we, we want it. Largest fish have cap, matured adults one, and the smaller one will stay. Describe and explain how methods other than fishing net hole size would, uh, could help to prevent overfishing. Always you can use education awareness as one of the answers, if you like. So giving education awareness to the people. The next one is that to reduce demand for public pressure or campaigning, by campaigning to eat from unsustainable fish stocks. The other one is steps taken by the fishermen voluntarily. Maybe, yeah. And other one is, the, as I said, Lance says, the laws, restricted catch weight or catch season.
ensuring sustainable population size, recovery of endangered species. And uh, the other one, as you said, is no catch zone or nursery zone protected areas. Yeah, we can make some protection to protected areas. And breeding recovery, limiting fishing season, again, by it actually combines with the law and the lawsuit and all these things. Fines, yeah, to put some fines for uh, breaching or violating the rules. Restocking, I mean, captive breeding and release. Yeah, it is a very good option too. Fish farming is also captive breeding and release. They're all the same. Um, there is a food web here and cod is kind of the fish species and almost become extinct because of the overfishing. So just how the extinction of the cod affects the food web. Yeah, zooplankton, zoo they might increase or stay the same, uh, but uh, there will be a decrease in the gallimot skulls, squid and seals because the food actually resources are being depleted and or there is a competition for the food. So, and also zooplankton are increased or stay the same, but the phytoplanktons they decrease because zooplanktons zoo are increased. Define the term sustainable development. Okay, uh, yeah, development without damaging or harming the environment, but we are providing the needs of increasing human population. Uh, by doing some developmental activities, but without harming the environment and leaving something for the future generation. That's part of the sustainable development. State the function of the mitochondria. Respiration to produce energy. State two characteristics of the fungi that are used to distinguish them from plants. They got the spores. The reproduction is by budding. The cell wall is different. It's made of the kitten. It's not actually made of the cellulose. So that's one of the differences. And it has no chlorophyll, so it cannot do the synthesis. It doesn't produce its own food. It's more like a parasitic like it has. So it's uh, actually called it as a saprophytic. So, and it's decomposer. It has a hypha, I, um, mycelium, and no vacuole, no central vacuole. But you know, the plants, they got it. Again, it has three marks. So we have to mention three things first. It does the respiration, actually by and of fermentation producing carbon dioxide and of course alcohol is also produced but that's not the purpose that why we are using this we are using it because of the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide gas forms bubbles and it causes the dough to rise or to become more fluffy as said the yeast produces enzyme and the enzyme digests the starch so it makes for us it's more makes it the, the bread softer and more digestible. Describe how penicillin is used to make an antibiotic penicillin. The fungus, they put it in the fermenters, then they um, send the air in, they inject the air in, uh, and also, so I just right here to injection of the air. Okay, and it provides, they, they, they give sugar, they place sugar also in it, um, and the proper nutrients. Then they purify it, filter it once the penicillin is pro produced. Explain why antibiotics can be used to treat bacterial infection, but not viral. This is not non-living cells, uh, is non-living organisms, virus, 
is non-living and has no servo. How the human body prevents pathogens from entering the defense mechanisms. We have different defense mechanisms. What are they? Or mechanical barriers. An example of them, I just write here for you. Like his skin, hair, nose, ear, wax. And then by the case, we have secondary barriers or another one here, mucus, mechanical or chemical, like mucus, stomach acid, uh, vaginal acid, tears, lysosomes, or by clotting, forming a scab by wound healings, blood clotting. Or the skin itself, hair in the nose, ear wax, any new case. Again, we have a chemical. A chemical defense mechanism is by producing mucus or having a stomach acid, vaginal acid. Or generally, you can say physical or chemical or blood clotting. And then you can bring some examples of them. For example, physical barriers like a skin, or chemical barriers like a stomach acid. And uh, you can mention, for example, mucus, or you can mention blood clotting and scab forming. Take the names of, and, uh, of the types of neurons at X and Y. Very good. So this one should be sensory neuron. Because it is it's, 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 uh, taking the changes in the environment and transfer into the other neurons. Now here and the Y, motor neuron. Because uh, it's connected to the effector, you can also write effector. It can be a muscle or gland. State the name of one effector shown in the figure six one. Examples of the effectors. Because it's about the control of the body temperature, so it can be connected, effector can be sweat glands, or it can be blood vessels, and also can be hair erector muscle. If, you are, if it is a muscle, so it should be hair erector muscle. State the name of the mechanism that controls the homeostasis, which is represented by the flow chart in the figure six one. Feedback, very good. Negative feedback. Describe how shunt vessels in the skin function to help cool the body when the body temperature is high. Uh, shunt blood vessels, they connect the arteries and veins together and usually by the constriction or by their relaxation, dilation, they control the amount of the flow of the, uh, or the volume of the blood flow how much blood will be passed through them. So in the shunt vessels here, they constrict or they close. So they direct the blood to the skin. And uh, imagine that this is the blood vessel. So the blood is going from this direction. It is split up into these two. This is the surface of the skin, okay? Right? So this is the, this is the capillary, capillaries. This is the shunt, shunt. It's like a shortcut between these two ways, okay? So imagine you are, there is a, you are, water temperature is very high. So you need to send more blood to the skin. What happens here, this shunt vessel should be closed or become constricted, become smaller. So it increases the pressure here. 
So the blood will be directed into one way, which is yeah, closer to the skin. So we have more blood at this place, at this uh, capillary area. Yeah. So there is more heat exchange with the outside. So it cools your body down. But if this one becomes dilated, it becomes wider. So what happens is it decreases the flow of the blood into your skin because when you are feeling cold, that happens, that the shunt becomes bigger, thicker. So it dilated. But here we have vasoconstriction. This shunt becomes smaller, it becomes in size. It constricts like this. Connecting your blood vessels together is well, like a shortcut. But instead of the whole thing, just affect the whole thing. It just when it becomes smaller in size or become constricted, it more, lets more blood flow into the capillaries and near the skin. So it decreases the hate loss. But when you are feeling cold, that one becomes dilated. So it directs the, the, all the blood into one direction away from the skin. So you can, there will be less, little heat loss. How the sweat glands and the hair erected muscle function in mammals when the external environment is hot? The hair erector muscles should be relaxed. Suggest an advantage of using neurons rather than hormones to regulate body temperature. Hormones take time, they go inside your blood and they travel all the way uh, to reach the target cells. Or the other one is quicker. And once the stimulus, the stimulus is actually stops, this one also stops immediately. Least least two hormones that are involved in homeostasis, insulin and glucose.